Testing, testing, one, two. Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. Now, today is a very special day indeed. Halo Infinite gameplay dropped for the first time last week. And I did a breakdown video where I talked about my initial thoughts and watched it live. It's a different direction for my channel. It's certainly the kind of creative direction I want to take it. And today I'm going to make a follow up to that video, a more in-depth analysis and discussion about all things Halo. But I can't do it on my own. Today I'm joined by Jonathan. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? Good now, to be back. Yeah, it is very good to have you back on the channel. Now, Jonathan, if you are an old fan of my channel, you used to do a lot of product reviews for my page. And although I know a lot about Mega Bloks, my Halo lore is still not up to scratch compared to Jonathan. So he's here today to fill in the gaps and give his insight into this amazing Halo Infinite gameplay. It's the main discussion at the minute that there's a huge graphical upgrade from the eight minute demo we had compared to the one minute trailer which is a really interesting thing. People have asked 343 obviously, and what they've come out with is that the gameplay video, the eight minute one, is from a build that was from roughly a year or so ago. So the idea behind why they've shown footage that that's old is it's probably the safest build yeah. uh, that's currently working, like glitch free, so to speak. So they've gone, they've, you know, they've wanted to show us a, a really good glimpse of the game and they've decided, right, well, we'll show them this. Yes, the graphics aren't fantastic, but they're not too bad either, and we at least know it works. If anyone casts their mind back to when Halo 2 was announced with their gameplay uh, video back in like, 2003, I think, yeah. was when that video came out, it was so unstable. Like, it was a, a button press away from crashing the whole game out. Yeah. Uh, and it was a fantastic trail. Everyone it was a fantastic trailer, but most of that footage never made it into the final no, game, which it is was what like worries a, people. It shows how much content changed within Halo 2 during development. Um, so, I, in a way, we could probably see that maybe for this footage as well. Yeah. Obviously, if this was designed a year ago, a lot of changes might have happened since then. Yeah, we will talk about the elephant in the room that a lot of people are unhappy with this footage, which... I kind of get, but also I'm way past the point of caring about E3 presentations, you know? Like, the footage that's shown at these things is not the final product. These games and, you know, anything really in the media gets hyped so much beforehand. We all imagine what we want to see, yeah. what we enjoy, and obviously we then come to watch something and it doesn't meet the expectations of no. what we've set in our heads no. so we immediately feel disappointed it doesn't mean that it's bad no. it doesn't look terrible it just means that it wasn't how you imagined it well the thing is and, i I, yeah. I i feel like i'm one of the only people that was not disappointed by this footage <laughs> like i don't i wasn't expecting something that i wasn't shown you know what i mean i yeah. didn't expect open world and i got it I wasn't mad about the grappling hook. I thought the grappling hook would be trash, but it's kind of slow moving. It's kind of clunky. Yeah, I don't know if he's just going to find that in a building somewhere. Okay, well, we'll start with the first trailer. I mean, that's how we mean to go on. We'll start yep. with the Halo Become trailer. Now, my initial opinion of this, when I Googled it again to get the footage, I needed to re-download the trailer. It's like when you, when you search Halo Infinite trailer, it's like the 10th one on the search engine result yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, it's really weird. It, like, it didn't even get marketed like when it first was announced no. as the Halo trailer. No. I was scrolling through all the Xbox news for that mm -hmm. day, and I'm like, oh, what, what's this? It's, it's become a new game. Yeah, because... So I just clicked on it, and then I watched the intro, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, IGN, yeah, IGN didn't even upload it as Become. They uploaded it as Halo Infinite official cinematic trailer. Yeah, um, so and then, it was really odd. It was just like, and then I, you got to the end and you finally see the armor. And you're like, oh, it, it is Halo. Okay. I, knew, I knew when I saw the glove, but yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, was, it was poorly marketed, in my opinion. I mean, it was never trending. And you look yeah. at, like, some of the cinematic trailers we've got in the past. Do you remember the Scanned trailer? from Halo yeah, 4, scandal. fantastic. They've always tended to give us some sort of insight into mm -hmm. Halo War that we don't get in the game. So if you think you've had the Deliver Hope with Halo Reach, yeah. that showed us a battle that's set just before Halo Reach happening. It explains what happens to the previous Noble Six. Yes. So they always try to give us trailers that fill in the blanks. The We Are ODST one, you see mm -hmm. how ODSTs are trained, yeah. you see conflict against brutes and how basically Humans without Spartans are outgunned. 
Um, even with Halo 5, you had the alternate swap around ones with Master Chief and Locke. Which was the biggest Fantastic false trailer. advertising I've ever seen, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's it still told you something. It set that mood, it set the tone, mm. and it gave you that insight into this, you know, battles are going on on other planets, mm. there are other Spartans out there, so again, it just fills mm. these gaps. My main issue, overarching about all of this footage, and or about Halo Infinite, I think Halo Infinite will do very well. I think the story is going to be real, really solid, but I just don't see the Banished as the main enemy. The description on the Halo YouTube page says, In Halo Infinite's campaign, the Master Chief returns when humanity's fate hangs in the balance to confront the most ruthless foe he's ever faced, the Banished. I don't see the Banished as a ruthless foe. They yeah, got they owned in every encounter with the Spirit of Fire. These words keep getting thrown around for the Banished, that they're brutal, ruthless, unforgiving, um, that the Covenant feared them. Like, that is literally how they're introduced, that, they, like, besides from us, yeah. the only people that the Covenant feared were them, and it's yeah, like... maybe, sure. Okay, maybe, um, you know, I mean, there's a common thing in media, uh, show, don't tell. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And this stands the point. We have had glimpses, don't get me wrong, I mean, let's not forget, they in Halo Wars 2, they had to turn the entire Ark's defences against the Brannished Supercarrier to take it out. True. That was the UNSC that did it, they literally had to cheat. True, but they the, did it though, the but, they, but they did it though. It was only yeah. one carrier, and... I, like, I didn't understand, and it was an issue I had with Halo Wars 2, I didn't understand the size of the Banished at any point. Yeah. Because yeah, it showed them as massive armies. I think yeah, it's very yeah, funny yeah. in the Halo franchise when there was a religious order so large that it threatened the destruction of every known entity in the galaxy. And you're gonna call the Banish the most ruthless foe he's ever faced. The That's prophets insane. wanted to wipe out all life ever. And That's you're calling the Banish the ruthless may not have been as big as we expect i mean yes you get that passing comment in halo 2 when high charity shows up cortana says that's the biggest fleet anyone's ever seen yeah. but with some a race that advanced there's going to be a lot of automation so it's not like there's going to be a lot of crew on each ship no uh, but also as well if you've cast your minds back to halo wars 1 uh, the Prophet of Regret in that one says that they don't have enough ships to de defeat humanity. Mm -hmm. That's the whole plot of Halo Wars 1. They're trying to hijack Forerunner ships to beat us because they That's admit true. they actually don't have the numbers that we perhaps think they do. That's very I true. I mean, let's not forget, one Covenant, well, one very small Covenant battleship can take out up to five pillar of autumn sized ships on its own mm. so it, it, they never had the numbers mm. it was just the power that they had so if you imagine that the banished they, this guy's been building resources for years atriox this guy's had a lot of time to merge the best of the best of technologies get the best of the best people and contacts on board so yeah it, it's not again show don't tell but yeah. this could be very much yeah this guy was just sat behind the covenant laughing and he's been the true power all along. If you want to convince me that the Banished is the main threat, you really need to set up the beginning of Halo Infinite well. Because yes. I know it's been a long time in the timeline of Halo, but in terms of Halo fans, we've only had Halo 4 and Halo 5 really since Bungie era. So yeah. if you're talking about what we're invested in, we've only just got over the Covenant, and then the Guardians seem like an exponentially <laughs> larger threat than the Covenant. Yeah. And now we've got this ragtag band of like ex Covenant. I get that there's a void to fill in terms of 343 storytelling because the Covenant have pretty much been wiped out at the Battle of Sinaion. So they need yeah. to fill that void because people well like we still want to play against the Covenant. So they need yeah. they need that alien alliance as an enemy. So I get the banish well, to filling that shoe, but yeah. I still like I think what makes people the most anxious about Halo Infinite is that they're just going to wipe the floor clean on all of the storytelling in Halo 4 and Halo 5. Obviously, these trilogies aren't like planned massively in advance. They might have a rough 
oh, Master Chief's going to start here in Halo 4, and he's going to end here in Halo 6. I don't think we can but, call Halo Infinite the end of a trilogy. No, anymore. but the point is, they've, you know, they did say it was going to be the Reclaimer trilogy, and looking at it now, I think it's clear there wasn't a massive plan. If no. there was a massive plan, there would have been hints and little references to the Banished in Halo 4. Yeah, of there course there would have been. Like, oh, you want to see if picked up a transmission? An off comment from Palmer saying, we lost another supply line, and there's just like an, a logo yeah, yeah, of Atriox is Banished in the corner, you know? Like, yeah. that's what tells me. And it's I mean, also like, if Halo Infinite has been in development for five and a half years, how long have they actually planned to have the Banished in the game? Halo 5, the only hints I picked up on that is if you read the description of the Arbiter's energy sword, mm. it says that the Arbiter's preparing for the Prophet's inevitable return. Oh, really? And then there was a bit of media that said the Prophet's just vanished, the surviving Prophet species after the war, because they didn't want to be held accountable. So they're okay. out there somewhere. So I thought, oh, so Halo 6, the Prophet's going to come back, reform the Covenant, blah, blah, blah. How are the Guardians going to play into this? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, one of the biggest interesting things, I mean, it was only eight minutes of gameplay, but as much as it was on a Halo ring, there was not a single sign of any form on a tech. No, no. There were Sentinels, there was no Prometheans, there, there was no, no Monitor, there's nothing. So mm -hmm. we really are in the dark there over how any of that's going to come into it. I mean, we don't even know technically Cortana's going to be in this. We're all we, like, <sighs> I mean, she, they, she no has to be. Her voice was in the original trailer she that has was announced to be. last year. For all we know, she might be more coming into it at the end of the game and, it, you know, a, a story for another time. The Master Chief and his forces have fled from the events of Halo 5 Guardians. They've been doing random slip space jumps to avoid major settlements. And yep. they come across the ring as the Banished occupy it and the Banished yep. end up pairing forces with the Forerunners and Cortana. But if you're telling me that Halo Infinite is just fighting the Banished for what I would see is no real foreseeable reason other than just, these bad guys are bad, we must stop them. Yeah. I mean, the Halo ring's broken as well, so they're not gonna be able to activate the ring, are they? I wouldn't say broken, I'd say it's still being built looking at it. All right. Uh, yeah. Especially if we look at the terrain that you see in the eight minute gameplay trailer, and there's that kind of like blocky rock stuff that was like in Minecraft. Yeah. In distance, I suspect that still layers being built. Okay, fair and enough. So like we saw a Halo, a Halo ring in Halo 3 uh, being very early in development. It still had scaffolding and metal framework. Mm. I think this is probably more of a step on from that, that it's like, it's almost ready. So I think it's probably capable of firing since the one in Halo 3 kind of was. I guess this should be the last comment before we get into the gameplay. Do you think that the ring that Cortana discovers at the end of Halo 5 is this installation? Well, you've had the one that gets intercepted by a Guardian at the end of Halo Wars 2. Yeah. That this is on. And then you have, yeah, that little shot at the end of Halo 5. And then you have this ring in Halo Infinite. Mm. That could all be the one ring. It uh, should be, though, shouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it should be, though. The ring goes through slip space with Anders, but the Banished have some kind of marking tag on it. Once it comes out of slip space, it's by the Guardian and Cortana, and then the Banished find the ring, and so does the Master Chief. There's a big battle there, and then mm. the beginning of Halo Infinite is the Infinity is maybe destroyed, the Master Chief is floating yeah. in space, he's rescued by the Pelican pilot, they gotta take the fight to the ground of the ring, fight Cortana and the Banished. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I, that, that fills me with a little bit of optimism. Um, let's go into this eight minute demo. They are making it very clear that it's just a demo. And so the main text, 167 days after we lost. Do you think that's after the events of Halo 5 Guardians? No, I think that's gonna be like the bit that we see from the original trailer with Master Chief fought in round. I think that's referencing that. So I think, I mean, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this game just throws you in there with very little explanation. But that like, Pelican... I'm mm. Maybe like Revenge of the Sith style opening where it's just that massive space battle and you're like, what the hell is going on? I think it's just going to jump from 167 days and it's you're just going to be sat there as a player thinking, what? And there's going to probably be audio logs or something that you've got to collect to fill in the gaps and you're going to be like, Right, this is what happened. Oh, that didn't sound promising, Jonathan. If I've got to collect audio logs to find out what happened to Palmer and Locke, I am done. <laughs> no. Yeah, again, it's a show, don't tell. I don't, uh, look, 
I don't think it'll be 167 days after the Chief was found by the Pelican pilot because I don't think he'd still be bitching that much. I think they're attacking those cannons maybe a week after he was found. I think humanity lost when a friggin' Guardian appeared in every main system and cut off all their communications and destroyed all their main battle cruisers. Like, I yeah, think that's it, when it, they lost. It, I would be surprised if there is a, a consistent opening to this game. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if it did just throw you in there. Mm. Uh, similar to Halo 5, really. I mean, if you think that back to the intro of Halo 5... But Halo 4 ended in a very round-off way. Like, there was nowhere yeah. for the story to go. So it made sense that Halo 5 started in the middle of the action. But Halo 5 ended on a massive cliffhanger, and I just hope they do that justice. First of all, um, I don't think anybody's complaining about the graphics of the cutscenes that much. A few people have compared them to other games, but like, yeah. I, think, I think you're out of your mind if you're on Twitter and you're comparing a picture of the Pelican pilot to a picture of Carter from Halo Reach. You're out of your mind because it's mm -hmm. not a finished game and it looks phenomenal. I think and all of these cutscenes look better than Bungie games. Halo 3. Anything looks better than Halo 3 humans. Yeah. Because uh, they've really dropped the ball on Halo 3 humans. Halo 3 is a fantastic game. But I remember firing that game up back in September 2007. Miranda Keys is... Oh ugly. my god, what have they done to Johnson? It's yeah. terrible. The Chief needed a new friend. That's I think that's what was so sort of like separated about Halo 4 and Halo 5. There was no dynamic with a human at all. Yeah, like, they tried to build it with Lasky, but obviously because he's a captain, he can't be there all nah, the time. Not really. Which is where like Johnson came in. Johnson was a, you know, boots on the ground marine. Mm -hmm. He'd been through all the conflicts. He... You know, I mean, he was a Spartan one himself, even. Yeah. Though he kind of knew what Chief had gone through, and he recognised that Chief kind of was different, that he had development issues, he didn't see himself as a human. Yeah. You know, because he had just been raised as a, a war machine. Yeah, I think they're definitely trying to build that up here. So you've got that humanity of Rohammer, you know, and we saw in the previous trailer that he's got a family. Mm. And then on the other end of that, you've got this seven foot tall death machine <laughs> who doesn't have a family like in the conventional way. No. He thinks himself outside of humanity. He doesn't realize he's part of that. I don't know. I see people complaining that like, they always compare it to Bungie era where Bungie said that Chief is meant to be like a blank slate for you to put yourself into. Yeah, after this I, many games, like after this many games, I want to know what he's thinking, you know? If you like that, that's fine, but honestly, I, I want to be a character. Yeah, exactly. I don't play a video game thinking, oh, this is me, but 500 years in the time where I never had a family, was kidnapped as a child. No! No, 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 no. <laughs> I'd rather have this built-up character so I can actually, exactly. you know, respect him and exactly. understand it. Right, so we've delved into the psyche of the Master Chief. Let's look at some of this gameplay. Overall, 9 out of 10 for me. Like, I'm going to defend this yeah, gameplay a lot. Yeah, so I know previously we've had complaints about the fact that Script's still in the... And it's like, yeah, so what? It's going to be an open the, world game, so you're going to have to have Yeah, Sprint. you're going to want that Script. I thought Script was a good way of representing, you know, the fact that this guy is a 7 foot tall super warrior. You know, the fact that you can turbo run practically. Yeah. It, well, that makes sense. I mean, but I really, still think the run looks a little slower. Yeah, it does seem a little bit slower. Um, but I think, again, that's probably representative of, like, you know, they always make little smooth and speed tweaks and things like mm -hmm. that for each game. So I think it's just that that we're seeing. Might not be the final product, because that's something that you can edit with a uh, patch or an yeah, update. Yeah, easy. Uh, yeah. We saw Halo 4 and Halo 5 have slight little tweaks. Did we? To the movement speed during their lifespans. One of the main complaints is the lighting of this game. Again, mm. alpha build. I don't think we can even comment that much about graphics and lighting when it's not a finished product. I just don't think yeah, it's fair, so especially fair on developers. These people are putting in like five years of their life into a mm -hmm. game. Lighting is such a unique thing with games that you can't add it later. Yeah. Like, with, when you're developing a game and you're choosing where your light sources are coming from, like a large light source like Sun, for example, that is literally a drag and drop type task. So you can put that in whenever you're ready to and then check it all over and make sure that the light's coming up like, over all the objects just fine. Because you don't know what the rest of the game can look like. You're going to develop the rest of the game and then decide how are we going to light this. After this game's released, it's going to get a free ray tracing update. So that's going to improve all of the light reflection, mm. refract, uh, refraction, all sorts. So 
it might not be there day one. We know that the lighting's going to be improved for day one, and then it's going to get even better down the line once yeah, they put it out yeah. the Xbox. I think unfortunately though there's always that pressure of being contracted to a company like Microsoft because yeah. you can't just be like Cyberpunk 2077 and just delay it whenever you feel like it you know yeah. you know what that's the problem with like a game like that is Cyberpunk for example looks fantastic but I, I feel like I might actually never see that the way it keeps getting pushed back yeah. so I do have a little bit of support for these big the developers like Microsoft uh, publishers, as I said, um, who do go, yeah, this game is releasing by Christmas, deal with it. You have to be ready. And we have waited five and, and a half years. That's <laughs> problem. Uh, if you look at, say, Bunch's experience with Halo 2, Microsoft said, you're doing for holiday uh, 2004. Bungie were like, oh, Can't we're be done. Really not for that. Microsoft went tough. And um, you know, I, I don't think Bungie were happy with that, and it's probably what contributed to them becoming an independent developer again, then wanting to leave. Yeah. And fine, that's your choice, but at the end of the day, there's consoles to sell, there's merchandise to sell. I mean, it'd be a, as much as this game might look a bit rough, it is an early build, but if 343 really are not ready for Holiday 2020, they should. Microsoft are going to hate that. That's going to be a massive misfire. The merchandise is already now coming out. Yeah. The hype train has now begun with the footage reveals and yeah. date. I mean, we've not had an official it's coming out on X date, but we've now been told holiday 2020. For them to then take a U-turn on all of that and go, oh, none of that matters now. We're releasing 2021. It would be somewhat It would be massive, yeah. Uh, and someone like Microsoft would probably not be happy. I mean, I think they're probably a bit more of a leeway this year with the coronavirus issues, and that has probably hampered everything. But with a game, luckily, a lot of that can be worked from in isolation, work from home. Mm -hmm. So I imagine it's probably not actually had that much of an impact. Um, but yeah. I it's... think on like general developer table meetings, coronavirus yeah. must have had an impact. But... Let's get into some positives for now. Um, when the gameplay starts, I, I like the transition from cutscene to gameplay. It's quite simple, but it's good. Mm -hmm. And then we see some animals that are interactive. My all-time favorite thing in all Halo games is punching emus in the face in Halo Reach. So, like, I'm liking <laughs> that there's animals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the grunts. Nothing but love from the entire internet on the new grunts. Yeah. They look I wonderful. Mean, my mind exploded when I saw that flying suicide one a bit later. Oh, on yeah. Game, oh, yeah. Like, oh, they fly now. Would you agree that the two main influences for the art style are Halo Reach and I guess Halo 2 or 3? Halo 2 Anniversary. Oh, Combat Evolved, Halo honestly. Reach. There's definitely Halo 2 Anniversary in there, definitely Halo Reach, and a little bit of Halo 4 5 still. Uh, as you may have noticed they're still using that Halo 4 5 Warthog. I think it looks a lot meatier and beefier. Um, I do hope they change the sound of it. Yeah, it doesn't sound that good. I enjoyed the sound effects of almost all the weapons and vehicles. Maybe the Warthog needs to be tweaked and the shotgun sounds terrible in my opinion. But... Yeah, I mean, I think they were trying to go for like an automatic shotgun that sound. That sounds airy. It, 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 yeah, it isn't as deep as a like a normal kind of pump action shot. Yeah. My personal feelings are, I think the sounds need to literally be turned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I felt they were a little bit subdued. These might not even be the weapon sounds that are set in for the game yeah. come release. These could just be placeholders that they've pulled from old recordings. Mm -hmm. I mean, 343 have been doing monthly updates on recording sound effects. I mean, you have the pug sounds that they were recording. Uh, you what on earth are they for? Like, the explosive sounds that they've been recording. So, you know, if they want to, they could really dial it up to a level. And then we see him open the TAC map for the first time. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um, and yeah, it was... so that's how you take a page out of Halo 3 on DST. You can actually see if there's an upgrades tab. Now, he never cycles to it, but we could be looking at maybe, you know, uh... adding, adding silences to guns. Maybe things like that, that could be interesting. The, the upgrades the makes me nervous. I No, I think it could be good. I mean, if you imagine you could play, would it be an open world exactly how you want it? If you want it to be a stealthy Master Chief, you know, you pop on that silencer, get your grappling hook, do you think, climb up the mountain and just snipe the hell out of everything. Do you think it'll be upgrades to the weapons? I think it'll be upgrades to the Master Chief. And that just, it's it what makes me worry. Be, 
it might be upgrades to the Master Chief. If it is, I think it by upgrades, it actually means equipment. So you can cycle between Grapple Hawk, mm. the new shield projector that you see. I don't think we're talking, you know, upgrade Master Chief strength to level I 10. don't know. I could fun. see that, like, he's been commissioned some new armor. And I could see that, like, he's got, like, slowly you'll get an upgrade for the ground pound and the slam thruster. And like all well, those things that I think need to be left behind. I don't know. If that is added, um, I mean, compare it to another Microsoft Studios game, Gears 5, that added an upgrade system to its open world. Um, who, you could upgrade the Jackbox that was basically the support robot for mm. the team. At first, it seems odd to add an upgrade system to a shooter, but that really changed how the gameplay worked. And for the better, yeah. You know, yeah team support it could pick up weapons for you and recover them it could help you with teammates it could you know so as much as it's yes it is changing the core gameplay this could be revolutionary really he drives the warthog through some enemies the i love the sort of splash plasma effect of the grenades that the grunt has and yeah. then he jumps straight out and he's pistol in some bad guys this pistol um, yeah, the, the new sidekick pistol. Chief's a straight up gangster now. You can even see that by comparison because they have actually done this weapon for the Mega Box line. Yeah. Everyone just went, wait, is that a Call of Duty pistol? Yeah. <laughs> Let's not like... play around with this. That gun that he picks up, that like automatic. Oh, no, it's it a Call like a of Duty gun. gun. I don't care. That is my new go to weapon, I think. Yeah. It it's looks fantastic. DMR. It's got the damage and range of the DMR. It's got the scope of the DMR, yeah. but it's got that sort of suppressing capability of yeah. the sword. That's what Halo 5 introduced, like a ton of yeah. vehicle and weapon variants. And I and loved it. That it's carried on. I mm -hmm. think that is one of the best bits of Halo 5 multiplayer. If I yeah. could go up into these towers and I could find like a legendary energy sword, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That is one of the things that annoyed me about the like, original Halo trilogy, is how he, each game, suddenly forgot about the last game's weapons and vehicles. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, yeah, the Shadow, we forgot about that. And yeah. oh, no, the Spectre doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. That, that's just in Halo 2. Where but were the brutes still... in Halo Reach? I mean, it's, yeah, it's all like, higgledy piggledy. And the thing is, because these games are only set a month apart from one another, it was just really odd to think, Oh, so suddenly all the plasma rifles are SMGs. Just got dis dis uh, discommissioned, yeah. It would make sense if installation, whatever this is, originally was occupied by UNSC hired militia. And yeah. there are just guns everywhere. They're not yeah. standard commission UNSC guns, but they're just everywhere. But well, if it gets set out of that ship, you can see that, like what looks like a crashed frigate. Yeah, yeah. So and I'm fine all with all this. And the towers that are clearly UNSC. And I'm also so fine. going to be tons of UNSC resources like yeah. scattered everywhere. And I'm also fine that if they've been at war with the Guardians for half a year now, they could have just been getting any old guns from previous history yeah, to absolutely. fight with. Like, it's, let's just get it all. Like, we're desperate. Yeah, don't go on resources. You're not going to go, oh, oh, we're not using that. That's a 10-year-old SMG. No. no, you're going to use it. Whatever hurts, works. You're going <laughs> to it. So let's keep on talking about positives here. The drop pod brutes, phenomenal. Love it. Yeah, I mean, really a surprise. Uh, looks like that the drop pods can be destroyed as well. They kind of mm -hmm. explode after they get out of them. Um, so maybe that's some sort of feature you could uh, intercept if you know drop pods are going to be coming down. Mm -hmm. You know, get the rocket launcher, start blasting them from the... Mm -hmm. Or maybe get in the Banshee and blast them before they land. But yeah, absolutely surprised. Great to see them come back. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of drop pods, be them ODST or Covenant. People have complained about that Lego design. I don't mind at all. I think it's pretty fun. Again, it's very early days. It's an early you know, beta, alpha, whatever version of the game that they're on at this point. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say anything. Plus, they're massive sci-fi apes. You know, they yeah, have whatever armor matter. they want. It doesn't matter. I mean, yes, this footage does reveal that it doesn't look like facial animations have been completed yet. Mm -hmm. Again, it shows how early the game is. And I'll be honest, you'd be a fool to think that's how the game's going to be when it ships. Everybody's fallen deeply in love with Craig. <laughs> what a Craig beautiful man. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, that was the one that everyone complained about with the animations, and it's like, that, that's, yeah, it's just development. I mean, we've had moving mandibles on the Elite since Halo 1. 
they're not suddenly going to forget to animate the mouths of brutes no. after what 12 years of the franchise no they're not the hit boxes yeah. of the enemies are awesome he stumbles when he's been hit in the leg later on in the trailer a brute clutches his back in pain when you shoot him in the back that halo music comes in and it's some of the nicest music i've ever heard in my life We're gonna rattle through some more positives. The render distance of these mountains, I don't think is an issue right now. If you have gone from the floor to the top of a base, I don't mind if the mountains need 0.1 seconds to render. I don't mind that. And everything else, the vista looks wonderful. The flying birds, awesome. The phantom flying by, awesome. The jackals have deployable shields again awesome and then this uh, sort of red plasma-ish weapon seems way too overpowered for my liking but I still i imagine that's like a successor to the concussion rifle from the look of it because mm. it does have an arcing trajectory it looks really interesting um so i'll give it that yeah and then the storm rifle-esque one the pulse carbine that's basically just a storm rifle isn't it seems yeah, really look. weak not I too mean, bad one shot's gross, but you know what weapon doesn't one shot bro yeah <laughs> and then he picks up a fusion coil with a grappling hook and he throws it at a freaking turret it shows that the versatility of this game is going to be amazing and it's one of those things play the game however you want the sandbox is yeah. there to give you the tools the wasp was an aircraft added as DLC to Halo 5. Yes. It's right there on the front cover of Halo Infinite. So we know that they are taking references from previous games that were just minor DLC add-ons. The gameplay was just wonderful for me. I, I felt like it was a true Halo game. When I've watched like the E3 demo for Halo 5, I just kind of felt disconnected that it wasn't a real Halo game. Just so dark and so like in your face. This felt like a true relaunch a re-spirited adventure into like the old halo games and mm -hmm. then the trailer kind of lost me a little bit the second he goes up that lift and that brute starts talking i just became disengaged from it but he was a bit lacking in emotion for sure and his lips were just weird and it was so strange well, that they chose to have the camera right up on his face when he just wasn't up to scratch graphically um, that this was used motion capture, an actual actor was used for his uh, acting. Yes. And so I'm, I'm not an actor was used for acting. I know. <laughs> Quality, yeah, yeah. And I think this is another sign that this is a really early alpha build because yeah. the character model didn't have much animation. And I think the important thing is giving 343 the patience to say that this is an early build and we don't judge you too harshly on it. But I just thought that it was strange for an eight minute demo. Like the last two minutes are just him sort of talking. Like mon yeah, and monologues are risky. I mean, you know, films take the, the mick out of them. Oh, you can't be monologuing or whatever. You know, it's it's a bad guy cliche to just monologue to a, to a camera, to a good guy. And I think they were trying to use it to like set the scene and hype things up of, oh yeah, the groups are gonna be a big, but I don't think it played off. Fell the, short uh, for me, yeah. Yeah, I think a, a proper cliffhanger would have been better. Fell if short. you recall the Halo 4 gameplay, you know, uh, when he's in the jungle and all of a sudden all the Prometheus Knights phase in, and it's like, yeah, that's a pretty good way of like, oh, how's it going to get out of it? Again, uh, I mentioned it earlier, the Halo 2 gameplay trailer from 2003, that literally ends with Bet You Can't Stick It as he's surrounded by elites, and yeah. it's like, it out. There's one shot that's very brief that Master Chief is looking at three blinking lights and people yeah, think it's menace and bias. No, I don't know about that. But then... Well, yeah, if you look at his comic appearance, it supposedly was the guy that brought Master Chief's half of the Fallen Into Dawn to Requiem. And then there's also the question of how the Spirit of Fire made it to the Ark. I mean, these things, yeah. there, there is some Ooh. fine strings being pulled that aren't explained. And then you have the last shot that's of importance to me, that the Master Chief is looking at the hologram of all the deceased Infinity tags. I saw a yeah. guy comment that none of those tags are Spartans, so that's interesting. One of them is the actual it's, Infinity. Yeah, and it says it's deceased, it's down. Oh man. So, oh no. <laughs> Just don't do it in a cutscene, please. Like, don't do it in an initial <laughs> cutscene. <laughs> It'll start all the ships getting blown up and be like, oh, right, there we go. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess it's not that bad because 
the Infinity seemed like it was doomed after Halo 5 anyway. It's not the worst thing. Just please don't kill Osiris team and uh, lock off screen. I can't be bothered with that. Don't mm -hmm. build these characters up and then kill them in the next game because they don't fit the current narrative. Other than that, Jonathan, um, I think the gameplay shows a lot of promise for the future. I'm like 95% happy. I'm going to be a little anxious that this doesn't all get sorted out and combed through before launch. I really hope that these technical issues are a thing of the past once this game launches. Well, look, you've got a team. We don't know how big 343 is. It's not really published. You know, they have a sizable team. They have all the resources of Microsoft behind them. Halo is the flagship title. Yeah. Xbox, Microsoft, they still say that. They still say it's the flagship title. Oh, it is. It is Icon. It's our equivalent to Star Wars, our, our equivalent to, you know, the MCU type thing. They're not going to let this go down badly. Let's not forget, these people don't see their families a lot of the time when it gets close to crunch time because they're just working on it. Yeah. I really wouldn't be worried about some unrendered mountains, some yeah. facial animations missing. You know, it, again, it's a year ago. Imagine what you can do in a year with a team that big. I have faith in 343 Industries, man. Like. They still, yeah. de they delivered, a f in my opinion, they delivered a fantastic game in Halo 4. And then in Halo 5, they made some slip ups with the campaign, but still Warzone was fantastic. And Halo Infinite is going to be a 10 out of 10. I'm being optimistic, yeah. but I think it's, I think it's going to, I think they're going to pull it off. I think they're going to pull it off. And then <laughs> the, the last comment we'll make is on some of these interviews that people have had with 343. Mainly the takeaway is that they say that there won't be a Halo Infinite 2 anytime soon. This will be like yeah. a game that will launch and get constant updates. Well, I think it's going to be so good. I, I mean, like Destiny 2, yeah. A year down the line, we're getting, oh, a, a campaign expansion. We've never had a campaign expansion in the main line of Halo games, which yeah. is fantastic yeah. if it ever happens. Yeah. Oh, and we're also adding the Forge mode with all these Halo Reach items set. It's probably why they chose the Halo Infinite title, but there is infinite possibility. Yeah. If they release a section of the ring and then every six months they add a new section to explore, You've got me sold. I would love everybody to let me know in the comments down below if this is the kind of video you enjoy. It's certainly one that we enjoy making, and it is the kind of creative direction that I would like to take this channel in the future, but there will still be loads of mega blocks, don't worry. Uh, this was another video with The Domain. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Another thank you to Jonathan for all your creative support, and we'll see you guys next time. I lost the, the internet's out there. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> the, the internet cut out at like the last second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in, Jonathan. We'll see you next time. See you next time.